All right, this is Amy with Resident Rockstar, and we're here with... Burn C. Bell of Fear Factory. And we're talking to them about their current tour and their new album, which is The Industrialist, correct? Right, the, the new album's called The Industrialist, the tour's called Noise in the Machine, uh, with our special guest, Shadows Ball, and a uh, band from New Zealand called Legacy of Disorder, The Browning, and Devastated. Nice. That's a good lineup. That's pretty good. So, your new album, The Industrialist, is coming out on June 5th, correct? June 5th. And what is the, the album about? It's about an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, it sticks. You know, it stays with the the uh, usual vibe of uh, Fear Factory's man versus machine, set in a futuristic dystopian type of society. And um, this is true for this one. However, it's from the perspective of a machine. The industrialist is actually an automaton who has become sentient uh, because of this newfound knowledge. Uh, it has. The, has discovered the will to survive, the will to exist, and, uh, and in turn is teaching others of the kind who all have also become, or are becoming, or are becoming sentient, how to survive and to fight man. Not just the, not just every man, but the the, the, the men who created them that are trying to take them apart. Wow, it's a pretty intense description. So, industrialist is a protagonist and an antagonist. That's awesome. Um, so during writing this album, like, how did it all go down? What was the major, like, who was the major driving force behind all the writing? And, and well, I think it was pretty much all of us. I mean, um, it was in the studio this time. It, it was just me, Dino, and Reese. Um, we decided to use drum programming, mm -hmm. um, and that really made everything go a lot. It simplified everything. Made everything go much um, expedited the process. Um, we started, we went to the studio in October, and before we went to the studio, I was, you know, just discussing with Reese and Dino, I was like, hey man, um, I really think we should reintroduce the, the industrial element of Fear Factory again, because it's something that has been glossed over or ignored for so long, and to me is one of my favorite elements. Mm -hmm. So, with that... Everyone agreed. It's like, yeah, that'd be, you know, I think that'd be great. And the fact that we we're using drum programming, it was, it could be easily achieved that way. So um, we went to the studio, but you know, I had a notebook full of words and you know, thoughts and sentences and paragraphs and quotations and blah blah blah. And um, we were just trying to come up with a title. I had, you know, had a lot of good song titles, but I'm just, we needed a title for the record. And uh, about a month into the recording process, um, Dino was like, hey man, how about The Industrialist? He came up with it somewhere. I found, saw it somewhere. The Industrialist. Mm -hmm. It was like one of those aha moments. You're like, wow, you know, that's kind of cool. You know, it, not only does it, it, can, it fits, you know, the, the, the theory that we want, which we wanted to go sonically, but also conceptually. And once that title was agreed, everything just fell into place. It all made sense, right? It's awesome. What um, what are the like major influences in this album and like this whole tour? What is major in major influences of yeah. this album? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know, you know, I think it was just each other, you know, we came, went into the studio and we were just really, um, really focused on the music, you know, I was working diligently side by side with Reese, tuning the vocals, um, we were all working diligently together with the, um, you know, coming to Southscapes with Reese, um, all the bells and whistles and all that, clicks and wheezes and all that stuff. Um, yeah, we were just literally living together in the studios, and to, you know we had, we would do some research. You know, we'd listen to some other bands and stuff like that, just more as um, like a research tool, like a hey, you know, you know, just like check out what they did. But I wouldn't say it influenced us because reference it's, material. It's reference material because these are bands we've always been listening to, but we mm -hmm. reference them. I'm like, okay, you know, it's like you know bands like Ministry, Godflesh. Nice nails, skinny puppy. All the greats. 
<laughs> Wonderful. So, um, uh, what's the biggest difference between like playing in America and playing outside the U.S.? You know, it's uh, Europe definitely took to us first. Most, especially the U.K. and Holland. Um, you know, it's uh, I don't know what the difference. You know, the fa Fear Factory fans are pretty much similar wherever we go. <coughs> In some areas of the United States, not so much. You know, we get a bigger draw. You know, for instance, we get a huge draw in New York City, mm -hmm. Chicago, not so big in the you know, Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, but uh, still, you know, get a good draw. Um, but the fans are still avid, you know, they're, they're totally excited, they know all the words, you mm -hmm. know, they're excited to see the band. So they're pretty universal? And yeah, you know, the Fear Factory fans are universal. You know, if you like Fear Factory, man, it's, it sets you apart from a lot of other, you know, sets you apart from a lot of other music fans. That's right. So, um, how would you describe your music to someone who's never heard it? Industrial metal. You know, just simplify it, you know. <laughs> you know it's, it's, that's what we were called in the beginning, and uh, that's what still holds true to me. So over the years, has your music changed, and how do you feel the fans have accepted the change in your music? We've had some evolutions through the, through the years. You know, we've had some, we've experimented a bit. Um, not every album has been accepted. Um, you know, it's, it's the way it is. When you experiment, you can't always hit a home run. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of ups and downs. But um, it was the return of Dino um, for Mechanize that really perked a lot of our fans' interest again. Um, you know, having Dino back in the band was, made everybody, made a lot of fans happy. Um, people were really excited about it. Um, when we were doing the music for that, you know, that was the first, you know, Dino and I were in the get to, getting to know you stage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, we were being careful and, you know, just working together with Byron and Gene in the studio. And, uh, when we, um, after touring for two years, you know, being with each other all the time, this time around doing this record, all it was about was the music. We didn't have to worry about anything else. So that was cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So, um, what is your favorite album and your favorite song to perform live? Jeez. Personally, it's like asking me which my ch favorite child is. Right. Um, <laughs> they're all, f you know, they all have good moments. Um, I can't really say which my favorite album is, um, but I can say what my favorite song is to play live in our set, and that's uh, "Self Bars Resistor." Is there a reason why it's your favorite, or? You know, it's just it's good energy. Yeah. It's you know, it's got it's just good energy. You know, crowd. It's a good crowd pleaser. It's fun for me. It's fun to sing. I just one of those things. You know, it's good reason. Of, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you know, I I give my all you know for every song, but I always get excited when we get to that part of set. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's the best advice you could give to somebody that's new to the industry, is just starting out? Get a lawyer. <laughs> get a lawyer. <laughs> um, yeah, get a lawyer. But um, you know, uh, just, be, just concentrate on being original. You know, and don't worry about what other people are gonna think. Because when you worry about what other people think, then then, then you're already caving into the problem. And that's not what we're into. No. <laughs> so, uh, what is after this show? Where are you going next? Uh, we got. Travel day to uh, Northern California. Um, my next show is in uh, Sacramento. I think that's what it says. Yeah. Uh, but we got three shows left in the states, and the day after the Santa Ana show, we fly directly to Europe for the European Festival Circuit. Then we f fly back, have like six days off time, and then we directly we start the Shockwave tour, um, where we're headlining, and uh, our direct support is Void on, and that starts on July 3rd, 4th, July 3rd in Seattle. And that's going to go for um, 
a few weeks, two or three, three weeks, and then we're, when that tour is done, we're scheduling headlining shows, continuing through the States, but it won't be the Shockwave tour. Oh, you and guys then, are nonstop. Hey, you know, that's the way it is in this <laughs> day, you know, it's, um, you're a working musician, you know, we're not like the Food Fighters who gets nominated and wins every fucking Grammy every year, you know, we don't sell this kind of records. <laughs> You know, they don't care if their music's downloaded. Mm -hmm. They're still making shitloads of money. However, I care if my music's pirated, and it affects my career. So, but you know, touring is a way to survive these days. So, is it true that because of music pirating, a lot of bands are having to tour more because that's the only way to generate income? Yeah. And what? And it's a trickle. It's a you know, it's a trickle down theory, where the less records you sell, the less money you're gonna make on the road. And that's why it's so important that people pay for your music, right? Well, if you if you support an artist, you should support them properly. Right. Because you literally are taking food from their mouths. Yeah, and you wouldn't go to work. It, every it's day not. It's not just the label you're affecting. You're affecting the artist. We do get a cut, mm -hmm. and that cut is we when we have a contract, but we do get a cut from that, and that cut is enough for us to live off of. But if we don't get any of it, yeah, it's the same. You don't go to work every day, and then you know tell your boss it's okay not to pay you. Exactly. So, it's the same. Or, you know, so, you know, people who download, it's like, okay, you know, tell me where your address is. I'm going to walk into your house and take five bucks from your wallet. Right. Because it's okay. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. It's your work. It's your life. So, That's exactly. You deserve to get paid for it. Well, you, you know, it's, it's, it's work. This is how I survive. Mm -hmm. And it's not about deserving being paid. This is, this is, this is how bills. I survive. Yeah. So, um, you, your website is fearfactory.com, correct? Yes. And people can contact you guys. How do, how do you talk to fans? Like, um, or who talks to fans? We all talk to fans. You know, I'm, I don't really do, you know, there's the Facebook thing or whatever, mm -hmm. and the fan page Facebook thing. There's a, you know, Bernsey Bell fan page. I don't have a personal page, but, um, you know, I talk to fans at every show. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the best way to contact me. You know, there is, there is a, uh, you know, you can contact through the website, and mm -hmm. uh, that's one way, or through Facebook. So do you guys have a lot of control over your website, or is it all run for you? No, we run it. That's awesome. A lot of people. Yeah, we were told, like, we, you know, we came up with the design, and we, it's ours. That's great. It's and it just got finished, actually, and it's, it just got, just, you know, the, the finished product just came up last week. It looks awesome. Yeah, that's really great because a lot of a lot of musicians outsource that stuff and don't have any contact directly with their fans or their website. So it's really great to hear that. Um, all right, I think that's about it. And so your website's fearfactory.com. You can see this interview on residentrockstar.com slash fearfactory. Right on. And everybody should be looking for your album. Thanks, Amy. So, okay. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you guys. Nice to see you. Looking forward to the show. Right on. <laughs>